So in Alabama and many other states in America, a police officer can pull you over, find a large amount of cash in your car, take that money under suspicion that it's involved in a crime, charge you with nothing, and send you on your way. It's a controversial practice known as civil asset forfeiture. So why can they do it? Where did the practice come from? That question was asked by Kathy as part of Ask Alabama. Well, Kathy, the practice of civil asset forfeiture was originally used to combat pirates. Not those kind of pirates. Ah, there she blows. So in the early days of America, the country made a lot of money off of taxing imports and exports. That meant pirates with ill-gotten goods and smugglers who were trying to duck the tax man were pulling money directly out of Uncle Sam's pocket. And if you know anything, you know that wasn't going to stand. The problem was, by the time you tracked down the owner of a ship and convinced the judge to give you a warrant, these vessels could be in international waters and out of reach. So the U.S. leaned back on an old English law that basically allowed them to declare the actual goods themselves and even the ship as guilty objects, even if nobody was charged with crime. If the goods were legal, the owner could come forward and prove it to get his property back. Now that's where the law got started, but obviously it changed over the years. During the Civil War, the North used the same argument of guilty objects to seize a bunch of property owned by Southerners who had fled South to fight in the war. And during Prohibition, police tried to use similar logic, that these newfangled automobiles haul an illegal hooch could be two cities over before a warrant could be issued to the car's owner. So they would seize the cars before they could figure out who was paying those automobiles. That used to be a modern reference. Time, man. Time. But these early versions of civil asset forfeiture all had big differences to the modern civil forfeiture that has led to a ton of controversy in the last few decades. See, in all those early cases, any goods or money seized by the police or federal agents went to the state or country's coffers. But in the late 70s and early 80s, the war on drugs kicked off, and lawmakers found a way to incentivize law enforcement to really go after drug dealers and traffickers. They enacted laws that said any profits made from civil forfeiture would go directly to the law enforcement department's budget doing the seizing instead of to the general fund. Now clearly that incentive could lead to ethical issues for officers who could use a new patrol car or maybe some extra money in the budget for overtime. And no surprise, instances of civil forfeiture exploded during the war on drugs and stories of abuse along with them. So that's how we came to where we are today. But we may be in the dying days of civil forfeiture, at least as we know it. Abuses of civil forfeiture are one of the few issues that seem to unite lawmakers on the left and the right. And that's not easy to do. I think the only other thing they agree on is Beyonce. Man, she's coming up a lot in this video. And at least one Supreme Court justice, Clarence Thomas, has hinted that if the right case makes it to the Supreme Court, he's ready to kick the practice of civil forfeiture back to the 1700s, meaning it can only be used by customs agents. But that remains to be seen. In the meantime, don't carry a lot of cash and watch those speed limits unless you want everything you own in a box to the left. I'm Jonathan Soboleski for Reckon. If you like these videos and like what Reckon is doing, you can help us out by following Reckon by AL.com on Facebook and Twitter. And you can sign up for our weekly newsletter at AL.com slash Reckon. Thanks for watching.